October the 11th, 2021. Guys, as the solar winds are starting to pick up from the CME, we're starting to see those quakes. And we've got a 6.9 now that's popped up offshore of Alaska, right there, 115 kilometers east of Chignik, Alaska. There's no tsunami warnings up at this time, but our solar winds have picked up a, probably 100 or so kilometers per second since last night. Still on the rise somewhat. We were peaking uh, over 400 um probably around daylight this morning so what we're looking at now is the continuation of the cme's impact on the planet it's uh even though this area was not sun facing at that time we've seen that before it's just pressure on the entire ring of fire the whole planet feels these reverberations of these shock waves from the sun and if we look back just a couple of days, you not only got the 6.9 here in Alaska, we had the 6.9 in Vanuatu and a 6.2 in Hawaii. Now these were before, the, those last two were before we started to see the increase in solar wind. But this one is occurring because of that. And when we see these CMEs, especially with a filament release, a lot of times they will hit the northern ring of fire. I've seen it hit it uh, with eights several times watching and tracking an incoming CME. Now, looking at space weather now, we've had a couple peaks, and it's dipping around 400, a little over 393.7 kilometers per second. Now, your density is at 6.8 protein proton centimeter cubed. That, according to the chart, would peak at around 25. That's pretty dense, and uh, that's the how many particles or these uh, energized particles are in this cloud. Now, the geomagnetic storm warning. NOAA forecasters say there's a 35% chance of geomagnetic storms today, October 11th, when a CME is expected to hit Earth's magnetic field. Storm levels could reach category G2, moderately strong. If such a storm occurs during nighttime hours, auroras could be visible in northern tiers of the U.S. from New England to Washington. And this is what we have. Your solar wind speed indicated here in the purple line. The average is just a little above 300 right there, 311. That's about average. And then we've seen it come up as the morning gets here, uh, 416 here. Different peaks you can see at 407, 379, 407. And this it's projected to get around 500 kilometers per second. But again, when you're dealing with an explosion that regardless of what some people say about the size or the shape of the Earth, 93 million miles is one AU or one astronomical unit. That's how far the sun is from the earth. And so that's a long way to detect uh, not only the exact arrival time, but the speed until it starts to cross these satellites. Now, this is going back to last night in La Palma itself, a few hours ago, but uh, it was very strong throughout the night. Some of these explosions were um, twice this high and lava was pouring over this flank where you see it now to the right of the uh, cinder cone. And lava has been flowing steadily out that um, left flank and down to the right through the valley all throughout uh, yesterday and today. It's just been very steady. Now, let's look at it now. Now, with the clouds and haze and the way the wind has turned and blowing back across the top of the summit from the ocean, the visibility is not that good. But you can still hear it. You can see this lava stream here. And in the daytime, guys, it's harder to see the lighter areas where you're seeing lava that's just uh, being thrown out of the crater. But the thing's very active still. You can listen to it. It's saying 1,186 buildings and homes have been destroyed. 38.3 kilometers of roads have been covered. You still got um, your sulfur dioxide coming out at 6,876 tons per day. We saw this rise to over 1,100. And you still got a lot of carbon dioxide going out. You can see in the camera to the left how far this thing is actually blowing up above the cloud layer there in the left image. And some of these images, as they switch the camera, you've got some that's got one, two, and three cameras like TV canaries. And you can see the from one angle the lava much better, and they will switch here. But I just want to um, turn this up for a moment and let you listen to it. And uh, 
uh, guys, it sounds as loud as it did last night. You're not seeing all the volatility because of the cloud cover and the daylight and all, but there's a lot of activity going on, and it does seem to pick up somewhat at night. Guys, and just switching uh, to TV La Palma, this was last night also, but you can see how active this volcano was. You see the different lava flows, and we saw two or three different uh, sections burst and allow a lot more lava to come through. But uh, in the top of the screen to the right, that mound that you see glowing, has that grew overnight tremendously. It was very concerning because it was still very hot, but lava bomb after lava bomb was hitting this thing, and it looked like it almost would um, create an avalanche because it was getting so strong. But if this thing cools and hardens, it's just making this thing get larger and larger. Again, you can see from here the different lava streams. Now these are the local volc excuse me earthquakes there 1110 that's today here now we saw this one from 1010 yesterday keep increasing in in its height this chart as the day went on and more quakes come in and i think that's what we're starting to see here now less quakes is better it means that we more than likely have less lava movement underground but this thing could rise just as this did now there was an early warning in September about this or before the volcano uh, occurred and um, it it should have been if you ask me a sign of what was coming it shouldn't have been that big of a surprise and I think some people were watching it but let's just look back at another chart now this goes back 90 days there was not that much activity going back July 14th in here but when you get into around September the 12th check this out way higher than what we're seeing now in other words this is the chart that you just saw right here, and this is what we were getting, again, back at September 12th through around September 19th, right in that area, about a week or, or eight days of very strong quakes and many more of them. And that I think this was an in indicator, guys, that lava was approaching the area where it is erupting now. So in the future, this would be a good chart to keep for you guys there in La Palma. I know sometimes it's 50 years between these events, but that indication there starting in September with that many quakes definitely should have been a very good indicator of what was coming. And this map gives you an idea that everything's on the southern side of the island pretty much, even though we saw that uplift on the northern side. These earthquakes have been, this is going on from uh, September the 11th until today. And there's been 200, I mean, 2,286 events. But everything's down in this area, and you can see they're divided by, uh, by their location. A lot of them are on the west side, a lot of them are on the east side. So this entire area, it, it seems to be um, above a lot of that magma that's moving. But guys, just keep your thoughts and prayers on the folks there in La Palma. They are catching it. You can see some of these uh, other images coming in. The uh, They will rebuild. They've done it before. And, and I've heard reports that this lava can take, depending on the thickness, uh, two to three years to cool down enough to where you can work with it and recut your roads out and, re and start trying to do something with the land itself. But the island is expanding. We're watching it, guys. You watch it. It's a heads up. Be safe.